Hello, Angie Gerber here, and welcome to my podcast, Awareness. Once you know, you can't unknow. A place you can come to start thinking and shifting your thoughts to finally create the results you truly, truly desire. It'll shift your mindset and give you strategies to get out there and get it done. Let's get started. So today I want to talk about leaders and what makes a great leader. Maybe you yourself are in a leadership position or you report to leadership. I just have been sitting on this subject over this past week or two, and it's interesting watching different people lead different groups of people. And truly, um, what Bob Proctor first taught me was to be a good leader, you first need to be a good follower and a good follower of the right people. So I thought about that often. And it was a very new concept to me when I first met Bob. And I was like, what does he mean a good follower of the right people? And it kind of got me to think back to one of my first jobs that became my career before I got into real estate for about 13 years. And of course, being in my I think I was in my early mid 20s, far from where I am today. I didn't know much about much. Um, The leadership I had had, you know, were maybe teachers, uh, parents, I wasn't into sports all that much. So I didn't have that coach leadership mentality that many people have many kids and uh, adults even today. Uh, But my first leader when I was thinking about back about that was uh, the owner of the company that I worked for. And his name was Dave Kirsch. And he is still owns the company and runs it today many, many, many years ago. And at the time, I couldn't quite describe it. But every time that I talked with him, or that he would take a moment to like a teachable moment, let's say, or he would have uh, impactful statements, or something to share. I almost always, even when he had to do a company-wide cut, pay cut, truly, I always felt better after being in his presence and talking to him. Because number one, he always left me, at least, with the impression of increase. I always felt better when I left him than I did when I first, you know, went to go talk to him. And that is a lot of what the impression of increase, what we talk about is when you're in a leadership position or even just your day to day, what can you do to leave anyone that comes into your presence better off than when they first approached you? And I remember he just, I don't know how he did it at the time. I don't know. It was just like he was almost not magical, but almost magical because I just didn't understand it. But looking back in retrospect, I now understand that whether he knew it or not, he was an amazing leader, which I have to, I have to imagine he did because he poured into himself. He had advisory boards. He had so many different people that he was accountable to and he wanted to learn from. So he, in my eyes, was well well above and ahead of the curve for most people that I knew that were in the business world at the time because he knew to invest in himself and to never be the smartest person in the room and to always want to strive and do better and do better for his people and do better for his company. And I remember one time I went into his office and I was... um a customer service rep, and I handled some pretty big accounts for the company and something had went wrong. And um, a shipment didn't come in. And I just knew he was not going to, you know, it's not a good thing. And I remember going into his office. And I was like, all right, Dave, so you're not going to be happy. It's not good. And I um, need to tell you what's happened. And he just kind of looked at me and was like, okay, And I proceeded to tell him what had happened. And he looked at me, cool, calm and collect. And he said, don't ever do that again. 
And I'm like, what? He's like, do not ever come into my office and start off with those words. He's like, just don't. You're not doing yourself a favor. You're not doing me a favor. Don't do that. And again, a huge learning lesson. <laughs> you know, it is what you make it make of it. Everything is your perception of any situation. It's a law of polarity. For everything, there's a good, and you can find the bad. Up, down, in, out, hot, cold, everything has an opposite. So if you sit there and dwell and look and go into problem after problem instead of going right to solution mode, um, good leaders don't tolerate that. Good leaders don't look at problems. They look at opportunities. And looking back, like Steve Jobs says, you can only connect the dots looking backwards, not forwards. It was so true. And in these subtle encounters with him. I learned so much and it impacted and impressed on upon me so many things that I carried forward uh, throughout my careers and my life. And it really just shaped, shaped me without me even really knowing what was happening at the time. And that's a good, great leader and someone that can have this impact without even have, you know, putting their ego aside, being like, oh, well, you know, I'm pretty impactful. <laughs> no, never, ever did he come from that point of view. I just knew every time I walked away from a significant meeting or a conversation with him, I always felt better. I felt empowered. I felt more educated, like I had learned something. And it was just looking back, it was just really, really something that I want you to think about how you show up if you're a leader, because you're a leader of someone of some point uh, in your life, or you have leadership that you report to, how do they show up? You know, because to be a good leader, you really need to know what you're doing at a very high level. And that's why at first, you need to be a good follower of the right people, because you need to learn how to become a master. We're not just born masters at anything. You put your 10,000 hours in and then you put your next 10,000 hours in. So if you intend to be in leadership or if you want to do something of great significance in this world at a very high elite level, find the people that are doing what you intend to do at a high level and start studying them. You know, what is your passion? You figure out what you love to do. You know, if you could wake up tomorrow and do anything that you wanted to do, you just got to do it. You got to create your perfect day. There's nothing, no barriers, no walls, nothing in your way. What would you do tomorrow? And then truly find a way to make money doing it and to come from service. How can you do what you are passionate about doing and make it your I don't know, career or make it your your purpose and your passion and your path that you're going to take. You know, if, if you would have told me this 10 years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. I probably would have stopped listening to this podcast by now because that's how far removed I was from this information. I would have been like, yeah, psh, shut off. Next, turn on some music or listen to, you know, talk radio where everyone's living out their dreams, listening to to them have their fun and, you know, just mindless, mindless. So I don't have to think just filling the time and the space. So I don't have to listen to this or actually think and, and imagine and use my higher faculties versus my five senses which again, 90 to 95% of people do because they don't know what they don't know. You know, and to become a great leader, I think discipline is key. Because once you've disciplined yourself, and you've given yourself a set of rules, and you've decided how you're going to show up, and you actually discipline yourself to do so, once you do that, you've earned the right to lead others. So you outwork them, you outperform them, you're there early, you know, you do what you need to do, especially in the beginning, and it should carry throughout your leadership, how you choose to show up. 
Because if you're not a disciplined leader, and if you don't have discipline, you can guarantee that the people that are following you as a leader, they're not going to, or they're not going to feel they need to because they see how you're showing up. So leaders really need to be disciplined. And if you look and interview and watch and study the top one to 3% of the best of the best, and probably whatever it is that you intend to to do or what you'd want to do, um, check out their disciplines. What do they, what time do they wake up in the morning? You know, what do they do health-wise? What are they doing financially, spiritually, in their relationships? You know, it's it's truly discipline and consistency will get you there. So think about that for sure. And the other thing, that I learned from Dave, one of the first first leaders, again, is the true leaders out there, they want to make the other people around them that they're leading better than them. Meaning that they're pouring into them at 110%. They're with all of their heart, with all of what they want, they come from service. And they want to take the people around them that they're leading and truly what can I do to get them to where I am or better? What tools, what resources, you know, what attitude, what standard, what disciplines, what can I teach them and what can I pass along to them? They don't lock up any of their knowledge. They don't come from ego. They don't be like, well, I can get you 90 to 95% of the way, but no one can be 100% like me. No, they'll want to make you 110%. They'll want you to go above and beyond what they've done. Because that's what true leadership is. It's about showing up and serving at the highest level. Because if, again, going back to the law of compensation, the more you serve, the more you'll be rewarded. Now, is there a need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there will be in replacing you? And if you're a leader at a very high level, your ability to lead, and if you focus on growing that and pouring into yourself so you can pour into others, it will be so difficult to replace you. It's unreal. And at that same company that I Dave was the owner of, I met my first mentor. And again, at the time, I didn't know what this what this was, or or why this was happening. But Diana uh, was, uh, I think, gosh, what was she the office? I'd have to remember office manager, um, operations manager, I guess I would call her, she kind of oversaw everything. And I have to say that she was probably one of the first people that came into my life that I didn't grow up around or that know me. And I could tell just by the subtle hints she would drop or things that she would say to me with, you know, kind of like making it my idea, or at least just getting my wheels turning. She was one of the first people that saw in me what I could not see in myself. And wanted to pour into me again, another amazing leader, because like energy attracts like energy. So it's no wonder she was at that company within another amazing leader. You know, it's it's truly looking back, I had some pretty amazing people that I'm not going to say I took for granted, but I just didn't know what I didn't know. I just knew how they made me feel. I cannot remember exactly what they said or what the words were. I do remember how they made me feel. And that was seen. That was heard. It was special. It was um, the impression of increase. Like I had something that they wanted, that I was an asset to this company. And I, I meant something and I made a difference. And it's like how they express that to me that really, from in my 20s, shaped and fed this servant heart that I had. And it's when you are a true leader, and you can find 
the pockets in the people that you're leading and just feed and feed and feed those until they're exploding over with greatness. That's what extreme leadership is about. How can you make the people around you better every day? And that starts with you getting better every day. And one thing that I learned from both of them as well, and now again from Bob Proctor, is taking 100% responsibility. Like Bob said, the buck stops here. If you're in a leadership position, you're not looking to blame other people for anything that goes wrong in your company. If you're in a leadership position, whether it be at your home, in your employment, in your church, in volunteer work, wherever you are leading others, you're taking 100% responsibility. And that's true for us as individuals, because we're leaders in our own right, when we are out and about and we are conducting ourselves throughout our life, throughout our day. Are you taking 100% responsibility for yourself and your actions and your behaviors, right, wrong, or indifferent? Because if you aren't, you're missing a big part of growth and of showing up at a really high level, even though it's it it's actually becomes very easy to do. And in the beginning, it's very difficult because a lot of times it's looked at as weakness or I don't want to be seen as wrong or, you know, the fearful, fearful part of what will people think. So it gets easy uh, if you just start working on it. So, you know, I can help you with that if you need to start working on it because I've been through it all. I've come from one extreme to the other. Uh, and it's just really, it's really quite freeing. And um, you get huge rewards from it when you decide to do so. It changes everything for sure. So think about leadership and think about who you follow and who you lead and how you show up as a leader. Because if you're not taking 100% responsibility, if you're not setting yourself aside, setting the ego aside, and really pouring into others and coming from the impression of increase and wanting to make the other people around you just as good, if not better, than you are, then I would question what type of a leader you are to be quite honest, just from what I've learned, that's my biased opinion. I have to imagine that I've learned from some amazing leaders that are still in the industry. Um, You know, across the board, you can ask most any of them. But leaders all across the board. And another thing that Bob Proctor said that they all agree upon, the top 500 people that Napoleon Hill studied, he said they disagreed about virtually everything. I mean, they couldn't agree on much. But the one thing that they could agree on is that you become what you think about your thoughts matter. So start thinking into results. Most people don't think they think they think. But if they thought they would not if they were really thinking they would not say half, if not three quarters of the stuff you hear people say, If they were really thinking, that stuff would never come out of their mouth. People are just reacting, responding, and getting through the day to get up and do it all again tomorrow. They're not thinking. A lot of people don't think about what could be because it's too far-fetched, because we've been taught not to. We've been taught to live from our five senses and not our higher faculties. So, yeah. And if you do have great leaders that have been in your life and they're still around or they're still in your life, let them know. Because sometimes the leaders and the people at the top, you know, they say it can be a lonely place. Well, that's because they're pouring in to so many people. If they're truly, truly great, amazing, extraordinary leaders, let them know that. Drop them a line. Let write them a note, write them an email, stop by and just tell them you appreciate them. Because our leadership, the great leaders, the ones who show up at that high level, 
they deserve to know and they deserve to hear it. And, um, you know, it'll fuel them even more to put even more amazing leadership out there. So think a leader today is what I'm going to leave you with. Uh, Until next time, make it a great day, everyone. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And if you like what you heard, feel free to share, like, subscribe, follow, do whatever it is you do. I'd love to get this out to as many people as possible because it truly all does start with awareness. Once you know, you cannot unknow and it changes everything. And of course, if I can help in any way, I'm here and happy to do so. Until next time, make it a good one.